Look at that. I mean, that is definitely some unmistakable flakes. It's like a croissant or something. Hi everybody, welcome back to Marie's Kitchen. I'm so glad you're here. Have you ever heard of using vodka in your pie crust? I've read about it, heard about it, and gotten so many questions about it. So today we're gonna try it. And here's the really fun part. This is my first time using vodka in a pie crust, so we're gonna find out together how it turns out. Let's get started. Okay, to start, we're gonna make my standard pie crust, but use some vodka in place of some of the water. So first up is one and a quarter cup all-purpose flour. And I am using my food processor. You can also make a pie crust with your hands in a bowl or a pastry cutter in a bowl, or you can make it in your KitchenAid stand mixer. And I do have a tutorial with those different ways on my easy pie crust tutorial. All right, next is one quarter teaspoon kosher salt and then one tablespoon sugar. And you can use less sugar if you like. My mom liked it with a little less. She used around a teaspoon. Now we'll give this a spin. Next up is butter. And we do leave the butter in the refrigerator until we're ready to use it because we want it really cold. The big picture for pie crust is that we want little pieces of butter coated in flour, and then when we roll those out and they go in the oven and melt, they're gonna release steam, which creates flakes. All right, I'm gonna grab the butter. This is one stick or one half cup. It's eight tablespoons or 113 grams. I finally have that memorized now. <laughs> okay, we're gonna just cut this into some pieces here, about eight tablespoons, and then I cut it in half. Then we just drop those into our dry mixture here. Now we'll pulse the food processor about six times. We just wanna cut the butter into the flour. Maybe seven. There we go. It still looks very dry, but there, the butter is cut into a little bit smaller pieces. There's some Big pieces still that haven't been cut up, but there's some smaller pieces. Okay, I've got my water here and my vodka. So why are we using vodka? Well, I'm gonna read what is written on the All Recipes site. I thought it was a good explanation. Vodka's effect on pie crust may seem like magic, but it's straight up science. The use of vodka enables the addition of more liquid in a form that does not develop gluten. The alcohol in vodka does not develop gluten like water does. So adding vodka adds liquid that helps to make the dough more workable and pliable without developing tougher gluten. Now, normally in my pie crust, I would use five tablespoons cold water. But since we're using vodka, we're gonna use three tablespoons cold water and two tablespoons vodka. So we'll start with three tablespoons water and now two tablespoons vodka. All right, now we'll process again, maybe about five or six more times. You can see it's starting to get wetter and kind of come together. I'll give it one more time. There we go, looks good, okay. It still looks a little dry, but, and be careful of the blade here, when you reach in and grab some, it comes together like a pie dough. Okay, let me grab some saran wrap. This is actually press and seal. It's very similar to saran wrap. So get a big piece of saran wrap or a press and seal, flip it over this way. Then we'll take our pie crust in the food processor and just give it a big flip. Like that. You see why I like making it in the food processor? It's so easy, <laughs> it's so quick. I can make one in one minute, which is much faster, obviously, than going to the grocery store. Now, we just bring this together. And then what we'll do is take this press and seal, grab all the edges and give it a twist. 
Then you can squeeze it out into a disc shape. And there is your pie crust. Now you can see in there all those little pieces of butter and those are what will melt while baking and help create flakes in the pie crust. Now we'll put this in the refrigerator for at least 20 minutes. An hour is even better. That allows the gluten to rest and also allows the butter to firm up. We want it to be nice and cold, remember? All right, this goes in the refrigerator. Now, I did have one that I made a couple days ago in the refrigerator, so it's been in there resting and chilling. Looks great. I have the ingredients right on there because otherwise I'll forget. I'll forget, is this the vodka crust? I don't know. <laughs> when you first get a pie crust out of the refrigerator, and this is just a great you know, tips for pie crust, vodka or not. When you first get a pie crust out of the refrigerator after you've been chilling it, it's gonna be pretty hard. So you need to let it sit out for about five minutes and let it warm up just a little bit. Okay, it's been a few minutes, so this is a little more pliable, you can see. So what I'm gonna do next is just use my hands to kind of press it out into a little bit bigger circle. Okay, let's give this a roll. Put a little flour on the rolling pin. So at this point, I'm not really noticing anything different about the pie crust compared to the crust that I usually make without vodka. Feels pretty much the same. Now, it looks like it's probably about big enough, so I'm gonna grab my pie plate and we can check. I'm using a nine inch pie plate. So to measure to see if this fits our pie plate, we're just gonna set it down on top. So that looks like it's gonna fit really nicely. We've got about two inches all the way around. Now we'll just fold the pie crust up, set our pie plate here, and then we lift our pie crust and set it right in the middle and then open that up. And there you have your pie crust in your pie plate. It looks great. Still not really noticing anything different. Sure is pretty though. Okay, now for the edge, what we're gonna do is just take this extra edge piece. I don't cut any off. I like to use it and have a nice fat edge of pie crust. It looks so pretty. So don't cut anything off. Just take this edge and we're gonna fold it under itself and rest it on the lip. Fold it under itself and rest it on the lip. The other great thing about this folding under itself instead of just cutting it all off is this actually creates even more flakes. So then when you go to cut your pie and you have your edge here, it is just like a big pile of flakes and it, it looks really lovely, tastes delicious. <laughs> so I really like that folded edge that's nice and thick. Now, if you get to a place where there just seems to be like way too much crust, you can pull some off if you need to. And then again, just go around and fold that under. Have you ever tried using vodka in your pie crust? If you have, leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. I'd be curious. This is my research. I don't have a test kitchen. So my research is right here and then whatever you guys say. So y'all leave me some comments. Let me know your thoughts. Okay, this looks great. We have a nice edge. Now to create the fluted edge, we're going to use two fingers and you can use your knuckle or your thumb. So we'll take two fingers and my thumb and just make those little flutes. Okay, then I just kind of pull these back a little bit to make sure they're set up on the edge. This was a very nice pie crust to work with. It's very, you know, kind of pliable and it's not falling apart or cracking a lot, so that's nice. Okay, there we have our vodka pie crust. Now I am gonna put this in the freezer for about 20 minutes and then we'll bake it. I always freeze my pie crust before baking because it, Again, hardens the butter and helps the whole thing kind of stay in place. Okay, I'll wrap this up.
and this goes in the freezer. Okay, it's been 20 minutes. We're gonna set this on a parchment lined baking sheet and that's just in case the butter melts over from the crust. You don't want it melting into the bottom of your oven. That's gonna smoke and create a big mess right before the holidays. Now, when you're blind baking with nothing in the center of it, just the crust, what people usually do is take parchment or aluminum foil, put it inside the pie crust and then fill that with rice, beans, or pie weights. I have done that before and I just had some trouble with it, <laughs> had issues. So this is my new preferred method. You can get an aluminum pie plate at the grocery store. They're about three for a dollar. And I just flatten out the lip of the pie crust here like this so it's flat. Just real quick, flatten that out. You just want straight sides. And then this fits right in the center of my pie crust. And that's gonna hold everything in place so your pie crust isn't gonna slip down into the center. Now, to hold this in place and keep the bottom from puffing up, you have to have some weight in there, and that's why you add the rice, beans, or pie weight. Or you can do what I'm doing, take an oven-safe bowl, drop that right down in the middle, and then that will hold everything in place. Now, we'll bake this in the oven at 415 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. You do wanna check your pie crust. All ovens vary just a little bit, and some have hot spots. So you'll just wanna make sure that your crust is not getting too brown. We're gonna bake it twice. First with this in the center, then we'll take this out and bake it again for another 15 or 20 minutes. All right, this goes in the oven. Okay, sounds like the pie crust is ready, so we're gonna grab it out of the oven. Okay, this looks fabulous. Really, really lovely. And I have to say, it does look a little flakier along the edge. So maybe the vodka is working. Now what we'll do is take a clean dish towel and you carefully wanna lift this aluminum plate out. This loses heat really quickly. This will stay hot, so you wanna use a kitchen towel to pull it out. And we're gonna just pull this right out of the center, like that. And there we have, oh wow, look at that. There's some big flakes down there. I don't know if you can see it, but my goodness. <laughs> Now it's time to bake the crust for the second time. We're gonna reduce the heat to 350 degrees and cook it for 15 to 20 minutes. Basically what we need to do is cook this bottom part that didn't get cooked while this was in the center. Since this is not in the center anymore, we have to do something to prevent the bottom from bubbling up too high. So what we're gonna do is prick it with a fork here like this. Now this goes back on the oven at 350 for about 15 to 20 minutes. Again, you'll wanna wash it to make sure that it's not getting too brown. And this is a really interesting texture down there. I've never seen it quite that sort of, it looks liquidy or something down there. So we'll see how it goes after we bake it for the second time. I have like three alarms set. Alexa, off. Let me check it over here. This looks incredible. There are just flakes everywhere. I don't know, can you see it? Can you see these, these flakes here? I mean, it's just the whole thing, it's just bubbled up. I'm pretty impressed. Oh, I have to cut into it. Oh my gosh, look at all those flakes. Let me zoom in so you can see that. I would have my assistant zoom in, but she is asleep on the couch. No surprise. Ooh, it is still hot and it is still soft. So just keep in mind that when this fully cools, it will get nice and crisp. But my goodness, look at these just layers. It's just layers, that's all it is. Wow. I mean, it's just flaking into layers as I cut it. Look at this. My gosh, I'm in awe. <laughs> still so hot, unfortunately. Okay, wow. <laughs> Can you see? Like I said, it will crisp up when it hardens and dries and cools, but look at that. I mean, that is definitely some unmistakable flakes. It's like a croissant or something. Mm. I mean, fabulous, wow. I love it. I'm sold. Doesn't change the flavor at all. 
really delicious. Thanks so much for joining us on Marie's Kitchen. Today we made my pie crust recipe using vodka. Thanks to all of your questions and comments. I am so glad, what a cool discovery. I hope you get to try it. Let me know in the comments if you think you might. I'm really interested to hear and I'd love to hear how it turns out for you. So leave me a comment and be sure to give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Also subscribe if you haven't yet and hit that bell button. That'll give you notifications. I have lots more videos coming up and I don't want you to miss any of them. For this recipe and more, head over to my website, mariesaba.com. There you can go and print out this recipe and all my recipes. And if you like, put them in a notebook and make your very own Marie's Kitchen Cookbook for free. My goal is to give you some really easy recipes that turn out great every time so you can build some confidence in the kitchen and feel really inspired to share good food with people that you love. From my kitchen to yours, thank you. Oh, wagging that tail. Yeah.